doesn't seem to be working. Oh, there we go. All right. We first see the Holy Spirit when we look at creation, as we look at Genesis chapter 1 and look at verses 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So we see the Spirit here in creation. And in Genesis 1.26, then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that is on the earth. We see in the book of Job, chapter 33, verses 1 through 7, where Job's friend is speaking to him and mentions that in verse down here to the middle, the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Once again, referring to the Spirit in the creation. As we look at the Holy Spirit working in the Old Testament, we see that it works in a number of different ways. We see it deliver a message from God, both oral or written, to confirm a message, to guide a person in an action, to provide knowledge or a skill, to provide a miracle. And in some cases, we see references in the Old Testament of the Holy Spirit referencing things which were to occur during New Testament times. I've put this on a handout for this morning just so we can have that available. I said, I'm going to hand that out to you all so you have got that. We're going to look at several different verses this morning. And as we read through those, I want to think about which one of these that we're seeing. I've, I have several individuals to help us read all these verses this morning. And if you would kind of give your feedback on which one of these you think that this particular passage is referring to. As we look at the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, we see 23 of the 39 books reference the Holy Spirit. We see different variations of names used. We see the word just Spirit in capital with a capital. We see Spirit of God, Spirit of Jehovah, Spirit of the Lord, and Holy Spirit. I've kind of organized this morning just to kind of go through scriptures, kind of how their phrasing is of the, of the Spirit. So first we'll look at scriptures that mention the Spirit of God. Ask if someone to read Exodus 31, 1 through 11. I've got someone already has got that verse to, to read that. And I filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. And I, indeed I, have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahizamech, of the tribe of Dan. And I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans, that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tabernacle of meeting, the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is on it, and all the furniture of the tabernacle. The table and its utensils, the pure gold lampstand with all its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the labor and its base, the garments of ministry, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister as priests, and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place. According to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. All right, so how do we see the Spirit working in, in the verse we have here? Given the ability, gave them the knowledge to be able to do those things. All right. Exodus 36, 1 through 4. Exodus 36, 1 through 4. And every skilled person to whom the Lord has given the skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary or to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Then Moses summoned the other and all of them, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given ability and who was willing to come to do the work, they received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites and offered to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled craftsmen who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left their work. And he said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. All right. So once again, we see them, the Spirit giving them the skill that was needed for these things. If you go through and read the, verse, the rest of chapter 36, we once again see mentioned the different things from gold, silver, bronze, the different skills that they, 
that they had. All right, Numbers 24, 1 through 3. Since the Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go to see on them who had on previous occasions, but turned toward the wilderness. When Balaam looked up and saw Israel in camp, cry by cry, the Spirit of God came on him, and he proclaimed his point. The oracle of Balaam, son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eyes are open. All right. Can anyone kind of give us the short synopsis of the story of, of Balaam? Anyone would like to kind of give us that? Who was Balaam? Who was Balak? Okay. So Balak would, does not want what's best for the children of Israel. In fact, he wants Balaam to, to curse them. Um, and in this particular verse we're reading, um, instead of cursing them by the Spirit, he blesses Israel. And so we see here good things told of, of Israel and the Spirit moving him in that way to say something that was actually a blessing to Israel, which, of course, is not what Balak wanted and um, not what Balaam probably was wanting to do, but that's where the Spirit had led him to do, which is what God um, wanted. 1 Samuel 10, 1 through 13. So what do we see probably the purpose here in the, in the spirit coming upon us all? The, the list we've got here. What, what kind of reason do you think it is here for the, for the spirit coming on Saul? Prophesy, but also, do you kind of see here probably also basically to confirm that this was the will of God? And then 1 Samuel 11, 1 through 11. came up and he camped against Jabesh Gilgal, and all the men of Jabesh said to Nabash, make a covenant with us and we will serve you. And Nabash, the Ammonite, answered them on the condition I will make a covenant with you that I may put, all, put out all your right eye and bring reproach on all Israel. Then the elders of Jabesh said to him, hold off for seven days that we may send messengers to all the territory of Israel. And then if there is no one to save us, we will come out to you. So the messengers came to Gilbert of Saul and told the news of the hearing of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. Now there was, there was Paul coming behind the herd from the field. And Saul said, What troubles the people that they weep? And they told him the words of the man of Jabez. 
Then the Spirit of God came upon Saul, and he heard this news, and his anger was greatly aroused. So he took a yoke of oxen and cut them in pieces and sent them throughout all the territories of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whoever does not go out to Saul and Samuel to battle, it shall be done to his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent, when he numbered them in Bezak. The children of Israel were 300,000, and the men of Judea 30,000. And they said to the messengers who came, Thus you shall say to the men of Jabesh, give them. They answered, But tomorrow, by the time this sun is hot, you shall have help. Then the messengers came and reported it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabez said, Tomorrow we will come out to you, and you may do with us whatever seems right to you. So it was, so it was on the next day that Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the camp in the morning watch and killed the Ammonites until the end of the day. And it happened that those who survived were scattered so that no two of them were left together. All right, so I think we see here the Spirit basically leading Saul in a course of action uh, to basically make sure that these people were redeemed. 1 Samuel 19, 18 through 23. It was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naoth and Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then went he unto Ramah, and came to the great well that is in Sichu. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at Naoth and Ramah. And he went thither to Naoth and Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied, until he came to Naoth and Ramah. So we see here, um, Saul was sending messengers to David. Do you think he was sending messengers to David for a good purpose? He was, he was, David had to escape and flee. And so, you know, Saul is sending people to get David. And yet here's they're coming to David. The spirit is coming on them and they're prophesying. And so I see this basically, the, work, the Lord's trying to confirm his, how valuable, important David is to him. And also preventing Saul's messengers from doing anything to David. First Chronicles 15, 1 through 15. the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Listen to me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him, and if you seek him, he will let you find him. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For many days Israel was without the true God, <clears throat> and without a teaching priest, and without law. But in their distress they turned to the Lord God of Israel, and they sought him, and he let them find him. In those times, there was no peace to him who went out or to him who came in, for many disturbances afflicted all the inhabitants of the lands. Nation was crushed by nation and city by city, for God troubled them with every kind of distress. But you, be strong and do not lose courage, for there is a reward for your work. Now when Asa heard these words and the prophecy which Azariah the son of Oded, the prophet spoke, he took courage. And removed the abominable idol, idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin, and from the cities which he had captured in the hill country of Ephraim. He then restored the altar of the Lord, which was in, <clears throat> in the front of the porch of the Lord. He gathered all Judah and Benjamin, and those from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, who resided with them. For many defected to him from Israel when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they assembled at Jerusalem in the third month of the fifteenth year of Asa's reign. They sacrificed to the Lord that day seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep from the spoil they had brought. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord 
God of their fathers, and with all their heart and soul. And whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, man or woman. Moreover, they made an oath to the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting, with trumpets, and with horns. All Judah rejoiced concerning the oath, for they had sworn with their whole heart and had sought him earnestly, and he let them find him. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. All right. So we see several places in the Old Testament with the children of Israel, how basically they have these peaks and valleys. They'll seek the Lord. They'll go away from the Lord. They'll go from the Lord. They have trouble in their land, and then God will send someone to deliver them. Or in this case, God sent someone to bring them a message about what they needed to do. And we see them hearkening and going back to God and being able to find refuge. First Chronicles 24, 20 through 22. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of jo Jodea. The priests which stood above the temple and said unto them, Thus said the Lord, why transgressors? He commanded the Lord that he cannot prosper, because he had forsaken the Lord, he has also forsaken you. And they conspire against him, and stone him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. And Joseph, the king of the king remembered not the kindness of Jodea, his father, had done to him, but slew him. And when he died, he said, The Lord look upon it and required it. All right, so here in case we see a prophet bringing God's message, but it wasn't accepted. We see him actually killing um, the prophet. So now we look at some scriptures with Spirit of the Lord. Uh, Judges 3, 9 through 11. Then even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel, and he went out to war. And the Lord delivered Cushasoth, the king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Cushasoth the Rizion. And the land had rest forty years, and Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. So here we see the Spirit leading them in action. Once again, various judges we see that are mentioned that the Spirit was on them. Judges 6, 34. But the Spirit of the Lord was Gideon, and he sounded the trumpet, and the Abyssalites were called out to the fall to follow him. All right, so once again we see Spirit, uh, Gideon, another judge that was uh, had the Spirit. Judges 11, 20 through 33. Crossed Gilead and Manasseh, passed through Mesopotamia of Gilead, and from there he advanced against the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord, If you give the Ammonites into my hands, whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me when I return in triumph from the Ammonites will be the Lord's, and I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. Then Jephthah went over to the fight. The Ammonites, and the Lord gave them into his hands. He devastated 20 towns from Eror to the vicinity of Manai, as far as Abel Karaman, thus Israel subdued Ammon. All right, so once again we see Jephthah led by the Spirit going out to once again conquer. Judges 14, 6, and 7. So here we see another judge, Samson, Judges 14, 6, and 7. The spirit of the Lord came powerfully on him, and he tore the line apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. But he did not tell his father or mother that he, what he had done. Then he went and spoke to the woman because she seemed right to send to Samson. All right. We see also in Judges 15, 14 through 16, once again, Samson having the spirit of the Lord and the great power that he had. All right, 1 Samuel 16, 10 through 13.
So here we see the spirit coming on David. Once again, I think we see this as also confirming, you know, God's will as Samuel anoints David to be the future king. 2 Samuel 23, 1 through 4. Last words of David, David the son of Jesse, said, and a man was raised up on high, the anointed God of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that will look over men must be just in the fear of God, and he shall be as the light of the morning. When the sun riseth, even at morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by a clear shining after rain. All right. What book do we see a lot of things that David wrote? Psalms. All right. Second Chronicles 20, 13 through 23. So here we see Israel is in distress, and God tells by the prophet how he's going to give them deliverance and tells them to go out and to have courage. I mean, they're going out against the force they're scared of that's larger than them, and yet God provides deliverance and uses the spirit to encourage them to take the appropriate action. And we see the faith of Israel in following that action. Isaiah 11, 1 through 5. spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make a decision by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he will judge the poor, and decide with fairness for the afflicted on the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and his breath and the breath of, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Also Righteousness will be the belt about his loins, and faithfulness the belt about his waist. All right, so we see prophecy coming from Isaiah related to 
Christ. And again, in Isaiah 61, 1 through 4, we can once again see another prophecy that we're also going to see a New Testament reference to. So we read Isaiah 61, 1 through 4. Luke 4, 17 through 21. We see reference in the Old Testament, filled in the New Testament. Then Ezekiel 11, 1 through 13. And behold, at the door of the gate, five and twenty men, among whom I saw Jezaniah, the son of Azer, and Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah, princes of the people. And said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief and give wicked counsel in the city. Which say it is not near, let us build houses. This city is the cauldron, and we be the flesh. Therefore prophesy against them, prophesy, O son of man. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me, and said unto me, Speak. Thus saith the Lord. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Ye have multiplied your slain in this city, and ye have filled the streets thereof with the slain. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Your slain, whom ye have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh. And this city is the cauldron, but I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. You have feared the sword, and I will bring the sword upon you, saith the Lord God. And I will bring you out of the midst thereof, and deliver you into the hands of the strangers, and will execute judgments among you. You shall fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. This city shall not be your cauldron, neither shall, shall you be the flesh in the midst thereof, but I will judge you in the border of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. For ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manners of the heathen that are around about you. And it came to pass, when I prophesied, that Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah, died. Then fell I down upon my face, and cried with a loud voice, and said, O Lord God, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? All right, so here we see Ezekiel spirit speaking by the Spirit. Ezekiel 37. 1 through 14. Let's get another uh, passage of Ezekiel being led by the Spirit. The hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley and it was full of dry bones and he caused me to pass among them round about and behold there were very many on the surface of the valley and lo they were very dry and he said to me son of man can these bones live and I answered O Lord God thou knowest again he said to me prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, that you may come to life. And I will put sinews on you, and make fl flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, that you may come alive, and you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I, as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the dry bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, sinews were on them, and flesh grew, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. <clears throat> then he said to, the, said to me, Prophesy to the breath, the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may come to life. So I prophesied as he commanded me, 
and the breath came to, into them, and they came to life, and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope has perished. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your grave, my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of the graves, my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you will come to come to life, and I will place you on your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. All right, so it's going to see Ezekiel prophesying by the spirit of the Lord. And then Micah 3, 1 through 8. And I said, Here, you heads of Jacob, rulers of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know justice? You who hate the good and love the evil, who tear the skin from off my people and their flesh from off their bones, who eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them, and break their bones in pieces to chop them up like meat in a pot, like flesh in a cauldron. And they will cry to the Lord, but he will not answer them. He will hide his face from them at that time, because they have made their deeds evil. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against him who puts nothing into their mouths. Therefore it shall be night to you without vision, and darkness to you without divination. The sun shall go down on the prophets, and the day shall be black over them. The seers shall be disgraced, and the diviners put to shame. They shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might, to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. All right, so once we see Micah prophesying a bit, as far as speaking by the Spirit. So some cases where we see in the, in the Old Testament, just use the word Spirit with a capital S, referring to the, the Holy Spirit. Um, one of those is Numbers chapter 11, verses 16 through 30. Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather for these seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of the meeting, and let them take their stand there with you. And I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the Spirit that is on you and put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, so that you may not bear it yourself alone. I say to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, and you shall eat meat, for you have wept in the hearing of the Lord, saying, Who will give us meat to eat? For it was better for us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall not eat just one day, or two days, or five days, or ten days, or twenty days, but the whole month, until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you, because you have rejected the Lord who is among you. And I have wept before him, saying, Why did we come out of Egypt? But Moses said, The people among whom I am number six hundred thousand on foot, and you have said, I will give you meat. And, that, and they may eat a whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them and be enough for them? One shall, or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them and be enough for them? And the Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord's hand shortened? Now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered the seventy men and the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put in the seventy elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue to do it. 
Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out of the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And the young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua the son of Nun and the assistants of Moses from his youth said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all, <clears throat> would that all the Lord's people were prophets? And the Lord would put the Spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. So here we see you know, Moses needed help with the children of Israel. And so God told him what he was going to do, told him to get the 70. And then God put a portion of the Spirit that was on Moses on them, and initially when that spirit came on them, they, they prophesied initially, they just did it that one time. Um, but we see that happening, and we have to think that basically that would also be kind of show that God, you know, these people were who God had chosen to help Moses, and therefore signaling to the Israelites that these were there to, to help Moses uh, in that. And we see also um, Moses here also saying that, you know, wish that, would, that this Lord would put his spirit on, on all of, of the Israelites. So, very good. Numbers 1, 12 through um, 23. From Dan, Ahijah, the son of Amishadai. From Asher, Pajah, the son of Okran. From Gad. Elisaphat, from the son of Duo, from Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Enon. These were chosen from the congregation, leaders of their father's tribe, heads of the divisions of, in Israel. Then Moses and Aaron took these men who had been mentioned by name, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they recited their ancestry by families, by their father's houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and above, each one individually. And the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. Now the children of Reuben, Israel's <coughs> oldest son, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, every male individually, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Reuben were 46,500. From the children of Simeon, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, of those who were numbered according to the number of names, every male individually from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war, those who were numbered of the tribe of Simeon were 59,300. Got the wrong reference there in numbers. Um, this is basically where um, the spirit of God was. Um, we see that was with um, Joshua. Um, First Chronicles um, twelve one through eighteen. Now these were the men who came to David in Ziklag. While they were still a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish, and they were among the mighty men, helpers in the war, armed with bows, using both the right hand and the left, and hurling stones and shooting arrows with the bow. They were of Benjamin, Saul's brethren. The chief was Ahazer, then Joash, the sons of Shemash, the Gibeathite, Jeziel and Peleth, the sons of Asmaveth, Barakah and Jehu, the Anathite. Ishmaiah the Gibeonite, the mighty men among the thirty and over the thirty, Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Jehanan, and jo Josabad the Gedetharite, Eluziah, Jeremoth, Beeliah, Shemariah, Shemariah, and Shephthiah the Herophite, Elkanah, Jeshiah, Azarel, Joezer, and Joshabim, the Korathites, and Joiah, 
Zebediah, the sons of Jehoram of Gedor. Some Gadites joined David as the stronghold in the wilderness, mighty men of valor, men trained for battle, who could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. Ezer the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atiah the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Matbani the eleventh. These were from the sons of God, captains of the army. The least was over a hundred, and the greatest was over a thousand. These are the ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month, when it had overflowed all its banks, and they put to flight all those in the valleys to the east and to the west. Then some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. And David went out to meet them and answered and said to them, If you have come peaceably to me to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if to betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look and bring judgment. Then the spirit came upon Amasiah, the chief of the captains, and he said, We are yours, O David. We are on your side, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you, and peace to your helpers, for your God helps you. So David received them and made them captains of the truth. All right, so we see uh, uh, Mass here speaking by the um, Spirit. Uh, we'll take a look at Joel 2, 28 through 32. It's here a prophecy. See companion passage that in Acts, which we're not have time to read. Last passage we'll look at this morning is just First Peter, Second uh, Peter, uh, one twenty and twenty one. We see that um, all Scripture through the Spirit. So if somebody can read that, and we'll that will be close. Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, everyone, for your participation today.